There are a few tiny daily habits that have been improving my life lately that I thought I would share. As a board licensed doctor of acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, you always think from a medical point of view. If only I knew the exact root of this person's health issues, we would know exactly how to treat it and exactly how to get them better so they don't have to come to see me again. But of course, the skill and the art of medicine is knowing exactly how to figure out and diagnose or what is the cause of this illness and then prescribing the right medicine to help that person get better. But in the same way, if you prescribe certain daily health habits for people that will help them move their body more in the state of health versus disease, you can also give them a powerful medicine that they can implement in their day-to-day -day life. So what are those few daily habits and practices that will make you healthier and happier? I thought I would share a few here today. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's jump in. So practice number one is sensing the direction of energy in the subtle body. If you've seen some of my other videos on how I translate qi, I don't translate qi as energy, but a very, very powerful practice that anyone can do is learning to sense the subtle body. Now, what is most important here is first recognizing what is your body's overall tendency. So for example, do you tend towards being someone who's more on the anxious side, the more hyperactive side, or someone who's more on the down or depressed side? So for example, in terms of the direction of chi flow in the body, if you're noticing more ascending symptoms, you may notice more issues like anxiety, issues with physical muscular tension, issues with insomnia, palpitations, or an elevated heart rate. That is the chi body with too much ascending energy in it. Or it could be the opposite. You might have too much descending energy. It's easy for you to sleep 10 hours a day. It's hard for you to get yourself to exercise. You're kind of low energy, right? You eat meals and you feel a little sluggish after. So this is a lot of downward energy in the body there. Now, if you can learn to recognize, is the chi body going up too much? Same with emotions, volatile or anxious or down too much, depressed or sad? you can learn to implement certain practices in your life. And most importantly, live a life in alignment with what your nervous system tendency is. Like for me, I tend towards being tight and anxious and pushing myself and being driven. So if you have a lot of ascending energy like that and you're prone to anxiety, insomnia, or even heart palpitations, staying away from caffeine is an absolute must. I've had to train myself to do two practices that help that chi flow, energy flow, if you wanna call it that, go down. Seated meditation twice a day in quiet helps consolidate the nervous system activity, right? Consolidate the body. If you wanna view it as like a energy field, helps it calm down, rein it in. And on top of that, staying away from stimulants like coffee, especially excessively on a day-to-day -day basis, will help the nervous system activity stay as low as possible so that you're not pushing it to a point where now you're having symptoms. Of course, the million dollar question is always trying to figure out where do those symptoms come from? Where are my symptoms originating and what do I actually do for practices? That's why I put together this free root cause quiz. It's the first link below this video. And there's a, a multi-page, like a 10 page handout on like which organs your symptoms are coming from, as well as a link to about 20 or 30 other videos I've shot on the origination of those symptoms or even figuring out the root cause. So I'd highly recommend you checking it out as we go through this video. The second practice is being aware of my constitutional triggers. So for example, constitutional triggers are sort of like your baseline tendency under stress. For me, since I was a kid, my baseline tendency under stress has always been my digestion gets weak, my appetite goes away, I get indigested easily, my GI slows down. So learning to recognize that is the tendency of my body and then being extra careful about recognizing, okay, I have to maybe pay hyper attention to my digestive system and to my dietary habits more than I want, more than the average person. Yes, it sucks, but that's just the cards I've been dealt in life. For you, it might be migraines that flare up, menstrual irregularities, acid reflux, heart palpitations, insomnia, understanding my body breaks down under stress in this way. So you can recognize your unique way your body shows you are being stressed or doing too much. It may not be the way that another body shows stress. Practice number three has been, I've lately been drinking a lot of Pu'er tea instead of coffee. Again, building off of what we just said prior, when you notice the direction of the chi body is too much upward ascending tension, anxiety, buzzing, it's going like this. Coffee also goes like this. So staying away from coffee has become a big daily practice for me, which is a hard one, right? That's a big thing to give up. But lately I've been drinking lots of Pu'er tea because it has the dark richness of coffee, but it is from a not only biochemical point of view, but also a TCM point of view, 
what we say a plant that drains dampness. So for people who have gut dysfunction or SIBO or really leaky gut, puar is very, very probiotic in nature. So it's very, very good for people with digestive issues and bloating. The final practice and daily ritual is I've begun meditating the first 20 minutes of my lunch break. I take a 45 minute lunch break when I'm in the clinic. So these days, after I've seen my morning patients, I spend the first half meditating. And that helps this, again, knowing yourself, this ascending tension in my nervous system from working, bring it back down to a neutral point. You know, specifically before you eat, which is where a lot of people, they don't take proper meals. And so a lot of the reasons they're having GI issues is they're just eating in their desk. They're working and they're not taking time to relax. So the body's not producing enough enzymes. They're causing issues with the stomach acid and of course getting a food baby and long-term acid reflux. So meditating the first 20 minutes of every lunch break has helped me descend the chi dynamic as we call it, put the nervous system back into parasympathetic, right? Rest and digest as they call it, and then have a proper meal. So these are just four daily rituals and daily practices that I think will help you kind of going forward in life to think about, you know, how can I reflect in my own life? What practices do I have to do based on my unique constitutional makeup and constitutional sort of triggers, right? These are some of the practices I've been implementing. Now, if you guys wanna book a visit with me, I see a limited number of new patients every month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. If you wanna just reach out, you can call or reach my clinic with the info in the description box or just go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic. And before you go, I have another great video on daily healing habits that I think will help you right up here.